How to rebuild yourself after a relationship with a narcissist? Hello, ladies, and welcome to my YouTube channel. But today, I'm not by myself. I have a special guest. Emilia Nage is a relationship expert, and she will definitely help you to fight this relationship with a narcissist and to move on after. Hello, Emilia. How are you doing? Hello, Alex. Très bien. Merci. <laughs> I love your French. I'm just, I was really amazed to know that you were talking in French and that you can really help a lot of women. So on, to be honest with you, I've seen a lot of videos and I love your content. I have unfortunately yeah. coached a lot of women from all over the world. They were in a relationship with narcissists. They don't know how to move on. But before yeah. to share your tips, can you just introduce you, introduce to my community a little bit about yourself, please? Well, my name is Amelia. And I live in San Diego with my hubby and my dog and my daughter. And um, I finally found a happy, healthy, and hot. I say healthy is a new hot, healthy is a new <laughs> hot um, relationship. But um, it wasn't always this way. I was dating so many uh, toxic people from narcissists to even a couple of psychopaths, sociopath types. I dated for a long, long time and I kept dating the wrong men and I really wanted a family, but I, I just couldn't get there. I kept attracting the wrong people over and over and over and over. And um, thankfully I did decide to dig deep and heal and do recovery. And then I ended up learning about narcissism and that that's what I was recovering from because that's the blueprint that I had. That's what I kept attracting primarily. And I was able to, through therapy and coaching, recover and learn healthy relationship skills. And now I have an awesome life and I'm very happy. This is amazing. It's not perfect, but it's <laughs> Nothing is perfect. Even for me, as like relationship expert, nothing is perfect. But yeah. you know, this is like, a, I love your story because it's, it would just lead to my other question. Do you think that every woman in this life, in this earth, can really just rebuild themselves after a relationship with a narcissist? Is it really possible? Absolutely. And not only is it possible, I just did an interview yesterday on the three gifts that we get for the recovery for doing going through the journey doing the recovery so not only is it possible it's also an opportunity for miracles oh i like it that's amazing <laughs> i know that you know in your philosophy you have three pillars that are really important can you share a little bit to to us how can we rebuild ourselves after a relationship with a narcissist what will be the main actions we have to do Yes, absolutely. I would love to share. So in my work, I teach the three pillars, which are basically three things that I have found as I've been teaching this and leading meetings in San Diego and doing my coaching work. They are without these three pillars, it's going to be very hard to recover. So you definitely want to incorporate these three things in your life. They're the pillars or the foundation, if you will for how you can start building your recovery, how you can start creating your recovery and working through this um, confusing and scary and terrifying and annoying and not fun time at all. So <laughs> basically the first pillar is you need community. You need community because the problem with narcissistic abuse is that it is all about making you feel crazy. <laughs> so we call that gaslighting. We call that basically telling you things that make you doubt your reality, doubt your sanity, doubt your feelings, doubt your perceptions. And so what happens is that we begin to doubt, we begin to doubt, and that doubt turns into self-doubt. And that doubt turns into insecurity and constant self-questioning. And so then some people try and they go sh to talk about their experience with people who haven't necessarily been through it and it's hard for those people to really understand they'll say things like oh but it's your mom no way that's happening or oh no that's the father of your kids but he loves you no way but yes way yes way there's these people that do these things and you know why they do it is a whole other topic beyond the scope of this conversation but basically you need community. So my advice is to get into Facebook groups. Like we have a Facebook group of over 4,000 people. I'll, we can wow. put the link below. I'm sure, I would include the link. That's really important. Just want to share something here because a lot of women that I have coached, they always told me, I feel that I'm crazy. 
you know, because they don't communicate with people like them. So I really love this advice. Thank you so much for sharing this. So I, of course, I will include the link just right below. Yeah, and then you won't be crazy because you'll hear that, yes, this is a real thing. This happens and you're not alone. It wasn't just you. There's a lot of other people that have gone through this experience with family members, with parents, with siblings, with exes, with bosses even, best friends, right? And so when you are in that community where people get it, they get the subtle manipulative tactics and conversational manipulation that happens with those kinds of relationships, then you'll start to feel empowered because what that gives you is a sense of, that you're not alone and that you you're not making this up and it's not your fault it's not your fault there is a piece of it that you were responsible for and i'll touch on that but it's not your fault that this happened you didn't cause this person to do what they did they're that way so pillars number one is community, community. that's something we yeah. yeah so find other people who get it meet up facebook find read books find people who understand narcissistic abuse okay that's really really important so that way you don't feel crazy and you can start trusting yourself to go through the journey you need to go through to create your healing okay so that's the first step now the second step this is really really huge you guys a lot of people come to me and alex probably you too that they say well i had narcissistic abuse once they finally figure out what it was Maybe they looked for a therapist that was an expert in narcissistic abuse and they did two, three, four, five years of therapy and they still are doing, they're still having the problems, they're still attracting the same kind of people and they haven't broken the cycle. So what I have to tell you, this is really crucial, is that there's emotional trauma associated with narcissistic abuse and the emotional trauma can be quite severe. So much so that depending on how long it went on in your life, whether it was a family of origin or a marriage, that, that time we have what we call complex PTSD. And we do have it. We do have it. I can absolutely guarantee you every single person that has come through my community, thousands of people at this point, everyone who's had narcissistic abuse has emotional trauma. Now, we all have emotional trauma of some kind, but what makes a narcissistic emotional trauma so complicated is the gaslighting that goes with it and the self-doubt and the fact that with other kinds of trauma usually there's bruises or if it was financial abuse money is missing or if it was drugs or alcohol there's some kind of evidence well with this there's no evidence there's no evidence the bruises are on the inside so a lot of times people overlook this step they overlook this step because it's hard to deal with this step and most of us frankly would rather not have emotional trauma right and then what happens is if you try and get on with your life but you don't heal the emotional trauma you are likely to repeat the same cycle so, i have one question emilia yeah. i have seen some coaching clients they came to me women and they told me alex i know that i'm always attracting a narcissist but i feel that it is what i want so what i understood is when you are used to have a narcissist with you could be a mother or father or even your boyfriend you will always look for the same relationship even if you know that is wrong this is what you call about like healing the emotional trauma Yes, that's part of it. That's definitely the blueprint because what happens is we have that blueprint and that's our understanding of what love is. And it's what, even though it's, uh, it's painful, it's familiar and it's comfortable. Mm. Even though it's painful, it's exactly. familiar and it's wow. comfortable. So many of us, you know, what's that saying? The devil, you know, is better than the devil you don't know. Yeah. Right, so we'd rather create what we know, even if it's painful, than courageously get outside of our comfort zone and create something new. And by the way, you guys, this is normal. This is how most of us are. We Healing takes courage. Healing takes being willing to get out of our comfort zone. It's it doesn't happen within our comfort zone. And this is a lot of the work that I teach in my work in the narcissistic abuse recovery work that we do. So having to come out of your comfort zone is, some, is, is a choice that you are going to have to make when you wanna change your blueprint. And you can make that choice. 
Um, but Thank going you. back to the pillars, yeah. the second pillar was um, addressing the emotional trauma. Okay. So some tools for addressing the emotional trauma are things like EMDR, which is a trauma therapy. It's emo eye desensitization, movement, reorganization, I believe is mm -hmm. the R. I keep forgetting what the R is. Yeah. Um, there's things like somatic experiencing. Those are all trauma recovery methods created by trauma specialists, people who specialize in trauma. And if you've had a narcissistic relationship, um, you have trauma and you have prolonged trauma, which makes it complex. It's layered. It's not the kind of trauma where, um, you know, you're in a fire or you're in a shooting and it's a one time thing and then you recover and move on. It's, it's prolonged emotional trauma. So we do need to dig a little bit deeper and give it a little bit more support to heal just because of the nature of the complexity of it. Okay. So that's pillar two. So don't leave that part out address the emotional trauma. Yeah, that's really important. So what would be pillar three? I want to know now. <laughs> so get good advice. started, get started, get started. So many of us stay stuck and I'm going to talk about the things that keep us stuck in a minute here. Mm -hmm. So you can see if you're doing them, it's very normal to do them. But if you get started, if you just take the next step, watch this video, reach out to one of us, reach out to a therapist, read about emotional trauma, read about narcissistic abuse. Just keep taking one step and one step because that momentum, before you know it, you'll have walked the path of recovery. What happens is with the first pillar, when we feel so alone and we feel so crazy, we start to isolate. We start to isolate and then we do not keep moving towards a resolution. So this is the third pillar is get started. This is a problem that has a solution. You're not alone. So get started on solving this problem and recovering and getting on with your life. And it's really important, ladies, I always say this sentence all the time, but there is no reason to still continue to suffer. I know how difficult, how painful it is to live a relationship uh, when we are, when you are with someone that is a narcissist, how to rebuild yourself? It's not easy, but you can do it. So when you get started, you will always work on yourself, and then you will have some opportunities. But I know there is also one specific mistake that most of the people are doing, and so maybe you have a slide to tell me, Emilia, that you want to talk about this yes, number I would love one to mistake. Share this slide, which is sure, sure, um, sure, sure. The mis there is one main mistake that people make. So I wanna tell you what that mistake is because pretty much everybody makes this mistake and it will keep you stuck. And that mistake is waiting for an apology. Waiting for an apology. So often I have people tell me, well, how could they do this? How can I move on with my life? Even subconsciously, we might be waiting for an apology. I know in my life I spent eight years being stuck waiting for an apology. It seemed to me like if I didn't get this apology, that mm -hmm. I couldn't move on, that I needed this thing from somebody else in order to move on in my life in the way that I needed to move on. But it's an illusion. It's an illusion. And it's an illusion that keeps us stuck. So the number one mistake I see in recovery is this one that I bolded, waiting for an it's apology. It's so true. It's just so true. And so we always wait for this uh, apology and this thing then will never come. So we would be stuck in the past and stuck thinking that we are still the problem, which is like, no, we need to move on. Um, so what would be the best thing to um, not wait for apology or an apology? What would be the best action that women can do? Why? Well, I'm going to give a little analogy right now, a little sure. metaphor. Okay. I want to go through the rest of these because they all kind of tie in together. And then I'll, I'll share the metaphor. And the metaphor for most people, most of the time has been like, oh my God, I got it. I see that, right? <laughs> so here's some more mistakes that go along with this. Okay. Thinking that someone else has a role in your recovery. It kind of goes with the waiting for an apology. And thinking that someone else has a role in your recovery allow me to illustrate with this metaphor so you are driving and you're turning and somebody hits you 
and then, oh crap, your leg is broken and you have to go to the doctor. Do you go to the person that hit you to fix your broken leg? Hmm. That no. was a good example. Where do we go? It. We go to see someone else and a specialist. Yes, we go to the doctor. And then does the person that hit us have to sign a permission slip for us to be able to get help and go to the doctor? I'm not sure. Do they have to say like, oh, I hit you, I'm sorry, here's a permission slip. I allow you to go to the doctor and get your leg fixed. Nope. <laughs> right? And then the third here, which this ties in, the third layer to this analogy that ties in is a lot of times because of all the gaslighting and the confusion and the trauma, we feel so unworthy and we feel so guilty and we think it's our fault and we feel like such a failure. And so what we start to ask ourselves is a, a version of, well, if I go to the doctor, maybe I don't deserve healing because it was my fault. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't deserve help because it was my fault. Well, going back to the analogy, if you get hit by a car and you have a broken leg and you go to the doctor, does the doctor ask you, was this accident your fault? Because if this accident was your fault, I'm not going to fix your leg. No, <laughs> I love your example. Right? And if they ask that, Same what thing. kind of world would we live in? <laughs> right? But yet that's what we do to ourselves. That's what we do to ourselves. So hence this concept that as long as we think that someone else has a role in our recovery, we will stay stuck. We that's will true. stay stuck. Nobody gets to dictate our recovery. Nobody gets to tell us how and if and when we recover. I wish somebody could go on a diet for me because I'm chubby a little bit. Um, my, high school, my high school sweetheart used to say that I was pleasantly plump. <laughs> <laughs> pleasantly plump, right? So, oh my God, could I, would I pay a lot of money for somebody to go on a diet for me? and do the weight losing for right? <laughs> you. Oh, I would love that, but nobody can do it for me. I have to do it. And it's the same with this. You have to do it and nobody gets to say, no, it's nobody gets to say in your recovery. So don't let them, don't give that power away. It's between you and you or between you and God or between you and you and God, whatever your religious or spiritual ideas are. Thank you. <sighs> That's thank a big you, one. You, that's you. a very, that's, I see that all the time. Pretty much yes, everywhere. I've seen that all the time too. And I know that this is a mistake that we are doing and we are get stuck all the time and we stay in this situation and we want to wait for an apology or even just for a discussion. Oh yeah, but I want to talk. There is no talk with a narcissist. Okay, ladies, it's like not possible. So thank you so much for this analogy and for all of this uh, slide because I can find every single woman that I've coached with a narcissist, they will find some solution. And also with the pillars. So this is just an amazing content. Emilia, I know that a lot of ladies that will watch this video wants to continue working with you. What can they do? How can we find more about you? So I will include all the links below, but I want to know also. Yes, well, thank you. I would love to see you. This is uh, the work that I've been doing for a long time, and I really, really love seeing women get empowered and move through and create amazing lives, amazing relationships, success and abundance in all areas, because this translates not just in relationships, but also in a lot of other areas. So um, the link is below is my website, oh, womenworthyoflove.com, womenworthyoflove.com. And if you go there, you can read blogs, you can read testimonials, you can opt in for my free gift, which is the pick the right guy checklist. It's the pick the right guy checklist. And I go through the eight things you want to check off when you're dating to know how, how to tell if you are with the right guy or not because as you know, these things can be a little bit mysterious. How come we don't end up with the right guy? So I would love to give you that so that you can continue to date with empowerment. Yes, so ladies, you have to click on the link below for sure. Just watch the website, connect with Emilia. 
Emilia, you know what? I want to make sure that we will do more videos like this because your content is amazing. To be honest with you, the second pillar, which is like healing the emotional trauma, I was the only one talking about it in France and I have never heard someone talking about it everywhere in the world. You're such like a good a pro and I'm so happy to have you on my YouTube channel. So please, I want to invite you. So I'm doing it now. So you have to say yes, you cannot say no <laughs> because we are recording the video. So I want you to be on my YouTube channel again and again, if it's okay for you. Thank you. I would love to. I have so much to share. So much healing is possible. So many little things we just if we just change that you know i have a few more we can talk about next time so powerful just little shifts but they make a huge difference thank you so much Emilia. so i will include all the link if you have any question ladies feel free to ask below and we will be here to answer your question and thank you so much one more time i will it's like a ritual so i will give you the final word Emilia, if you want to conclude this video merci beaucoup <laughs> I love this work. I love healing. I love recovery. I love empowerment. I so happy to all of you who came and listened because this is courageous. I love that you're here and thank you so much, Alex, for having me. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Emilia. We'll see you soon, ladies. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.